Hola mi gente, bienvenidos a todos aquí a Art of Comics. Yo soy Andrés José Salazar. Bienvenidos a todos mis compadres a venir aquí a este YouTube. Vamos a hablar sobre de cómics y hoy vamos a hablar en particular de Love and Rockets. Okay guys, just wanted to just shout out real quick. If you want, I'll do this bilingually. I love comics. I love Love and Rockets. These are some Chicanos writing this from my mi tierra de Oxnard. So I thought, you know what? I'll, let me just do it all in Spanish. But maybe I won't. Um, so let's just talk about Love and Rockets, okay? I have been late on the game with these guys. Honestly, um, I was not mature enough, just straight out. Um, I wasn't ready. I was reading X-Men and Web of Spider-Man when these guys were putting out like straight up literature. Um, I wasn't ready for Chicana lead stories, you know, with lesbian, with all of the, the real world stuff that these guys were talking about in comics. I just wasn't ready for it. So it wasn't until later in life that I got mature enough and I figured out, you know what? I'm going to give Love and Rockets a freaking shot because everyone's talking about it. Okay? But I can handle Chris Ware and Mouse and whatever. Let me just dip into some of this. Okay? And uh, today we're going to talk about it. So, um... Particularly, we're going to talk about Gilbert Beto stuff, okay? Um, his work is different than Jaime's. And this is going to be part one. We'll do many Love and Rockets. De verdad, okay? Entonces, so we're going to do a lot of these, but we're going to start here. I'm going to talk a little bit about Beyond Palomar. My experience with these guys, I've met them a couple times at shows. Uh, once in Vegas, where they live now, they're both from Oxnard. They started doing this series back in the late 80s. Sent it to Gary Groth, publisher of Fantagraphics. Fell in love with it, started publishing it, right? And they just been cranking. And they still are cranking out new issues of Love and Rockets. They're brothers. There's a third brother, too, that did a little bit of work with them early on. Um... And uh, while the Love and Rockets is like the same like banner, um, they both do their own different stuff, right? So there's Jaime stuff, there's uh, Gilbert stuff, and I was drawn to Gilbert stuff. Um, and so while Jaime potentially might, has a better draft draftsman, um, I really like Beto stuff. So that's what I'm kind of focused on. And so today we're going to talk a little bit about. Um, Gilbert stuff. Anyway, back to the cons. Met them in Vegas. Um, met them a couple times at San Diego. And, um, you know, seemed like nice guys. Very nice, pleasant, um, a little reserved. I would say reserved. I asked a couple questions, you know, reserved answers. But, you know, they get hounded all the time. And, you know, I'm just a fan to them, right? So they don't know me. We didn't have dinner, so we didn't get to really talk much. But uh, they were pleasant enough, so there you go. Um, so let's talk about this, okay? Because this book is really... I don't know what to say about it. It's powerful. It's just a powerful, and it's great storytelling. And these guys know comics. They really do. They really know the lexicon, the language, and um, and I want I want to share a little bit about some of this stuff. So let's go ahead and dive into Beyond Palomar a little bit. Okay, let's do it. Come on, let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, guys. As I mentioned, this is uh, Gilbert's first. Uh, well, this is the first of many videos we're going to do about Love and Rockets, and this one is Beyond Palomar. This is not his first. This is somewhere in the middle. I um, just picked it up, so I don't think, I mean, well, I haven't read it chronological, so I'm going to say you don't need to. Maybe you do, but the way Gilbert is writing a lot of his stuff, um, it's a little non, it's not linear. It jumps around in time. 
and I think that it's cool if you don't have to read it one by one, okay? So no worries. We're gonna do Poison River. I'm gonna talk about this. This is the story particularly that I wanna like get into. Um, when was this published? Ba 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 ba. First edition was 2007, okay? So this is fairly recent. I mean, I'm gonna say that, you know, what is that? You know, 12 years or so is recent because it is compared to the fact that he did stuff back in the 80s. So it's recent. Um, I won't spoil everything. I'm just gonna like thumb through some of it. But one of the things that I really, really like about Berto is that he is using black and white, but he's really great at textures and creating these textures that in that I don't think are digital. He's not using screen tones. He is not doing kind of the mangaka style stuff. He's doing it all with different textures with his um you know, his, his devices. So this here, you know, these lines here to kind of create this tone, which is the same tone as this um, smoking jacket, but then another tone for the kind of sash and collar. Um, and we're gonna see all these different tones in here that I just really like. It really is, is um, it's just really well done. And the blacks here are really great. I mean, I would have been a dummy and I would have just made that white. And I wouldn't have even thought about doing the ceiling. And so he does though. But And then there's this tone here where he's putting lines. Now, and I what I would have done, because I'm a dummy, I would have just put straight lines. But if you look, he's not doing that. He's actually breaking those up. So every, you know, inch or so, is another set of lines. So it's not just homogenous, you know, lines that you just slap in there. He's doing these individually and that just adds a lot more texture to it. And, um, you know, and then I wouldn't have even put those. I wouldn't have known that. So he's just, page, look at this, page one, and there's just a lot going on. The story, his stories are very real. It's focused on, you know, these families that are in the States, in Mexico, these places palomar this kind of mysterious its own little pueblo that's there um there's you know rape you know drugs murder i mean it's very mature a lot of stuff's going on here and the and the leads in his stories are these females you know and this one particularly is about luba um and luba's mom maria and uh, we're gonna learn about Maria a little bit, right? And so it, it, this story spans a couple generations, a lot of time, and it does kind of go back and forth a bit, right? And so there's the, the campesinos, the little like peasants in these little villages, there's the rich people. I mean, it really showing this, the social dichotomy of Mexico. And so um, it's really brilliant. I mean, look at these things here. Again, black and white, beautiful, the beautiful Rolls Royce or whatever that is. Um, he draws women very well, very attractive, and with you know the the classic you know less is more. So very little uh, lines on her work, and they're all going to be very curvy. So uh, this is Poison River. So we we learned a little bit about these campesinos and what's going on. You know, look at this texture here. It's just really great. And then again here. I mean, this is the kind of stuff. Oh, now wait a minute. Let me look at this. Let me dive in. I wonder if this is a screen tone though. I can't tell. This could be his just pen. This could be a screen tone. I don't know. I bet he just did it himself though. Anyway, this is Maria. She's gonna be the mom of Luba. We're gonna learn about that. Um, and you know, they're all gonna be busty chicks. So that's kind of the way that, that's kind of the way that goes. Um, so you gotta be down with that. I really like this because this really, um, kind of each chapter focuses on a character's perspective. And uh, a lot of alcoholism and drug abuse. I mean, there's just so much going on. Uh, I just wanna just flip through it though here for you. Another thing, you're gonna see when you read this stuff, it is, there's a lot of like 
archy kind of feel to it uh, in style, not in storytelling necessarily uh, as far as theme or plot or characters, but in the language of the comic. And that's because they loved Archie, and they were all about Archie, and they copied Archie, and you know that's that's what they did. And so, you'll see some kind of Archieisms, um, you know, st you know this very kind of like cartoonish, uh, comedic kind of look at things, but it's a very serious situation, you know. And that's what's great is that um, you've got this very serious story, but. You got these little moments that these kind of like cartoony, funny little bits, um, and I love this kind of stuff. I love the little like big stars, and this is when he's borracho, you know, he's drunk and and everything. I, I love all that kind of th all that kind of stuff. Little stars and bubbles, you know, when they got bubbles, they're drunk. Again, doing these lines, and they're not, you know, yeah. I gotta, I gotta take take pictures of this and just remind myself when I'm doing then this to uh, kind of create that. And it just looks so cool. It looks hand done. You know, it's not like a screen tone. So a lot of this is about kind of getting out of the ghetto, right? Getting ahead. And these women, a lot of them, to do that, had to use their body and use what the one thing they, they had that men wanted, right? And so... Um, using their feminine wiles they were able to get ahead this is a great page too i took pictures of this on instagram i just the the texture the different style of this right compared to this and then there's this which what is this? i mean these clouds here with i mean that's just really cool and then there's this great silhouette here of the tree and the and then the big luxury liner that's somewhere you know, and we see the little little girl is chasing him, Eduardo. So here's the story of Ophelia. Um, and and this stuff is great too. There's a lot of characterization. There's a lot of like different characters all trying to get ahead, all trying to do what they can to survive. You know, this kid's being a brat. She resents the baby. So there's some anger there and stuff. And and it goes further, right? And he abuses and he leaves and dumps. and um, Then there's these kind of old, old toy kind of motif in this particular story with a kind of a racist bent to it or old style kind of look, Pedro. I just really, yeah, I dig that too. It's a great, it's a great little sound effect. So this is a story, you know, where if you want to, if you want to read a book that is about Again, you know, life, Chicano life, you know, living on the border, Mexico, you know, United States, fame, money, power, you know, it's very soap opera-ish, you know, with, in fact, yeah, now that I think about it, it really does have a kind of soap opera quality to it, um, and it is heavy, it's not light, it won't like, oh, this is hilarious, this is fun, it's actually not that fun, so to speak, you know, because it's so heavy. But it's really well done and well crafted. Here we enter Peter, who is kind of a, he's an interesting character. He, he, musician turns into kind of a gangster, drug lord, with this strange fetish of women's belly buttons. He's, he's heterosexual, but there's this weird kink about him. He's gay, you know, so we don't really know. It's not very clear about a lot of these things. I mean, then there's Blas, who definitely is gay, but there's just these these very weirdness to it. You know, he just, he likes looking at her belly button. And we learn about why that is later on. This is Luba, by the way, as a kid. She's probably, you know, 15, 14 here. And he draws the acne to kind of show that. And she's our, she's our main protagonist in this story. And in the next, uh, some other books, her kids and other people 
uh, like Fritz and all of them are all kind of connected to Luba. And uh, Luba idiosyncratically has this hammer she carries around. And so we learn about that. Oh, this is a great page. Nine panel grid, big fan of that. And uh, just the way this goes, you know, boom, boom, here, stop the car, screech, I gotta go, she's taking off, he's chasing her. I mean, this is really well done. Stop, just changes the everything. Now we got two shot in the side. Just every panel is a different type of frame, a different type of composition and it tells us a really cool story. This here, this one page is a great, great page. Just, that's a great page. And now, uh, they're gonna be together. Now, here's Lubita, here's Luba. As she grows up, uh, Chichona, she's got this big ass hammer she carries around. We'll, we'll learn about why that is. Because of her beauty, and this young girl, Pedro, uh, Peter's gonna take take her as a wife, although of course he has another wife. We'll skip past some of the, it, it is, it, there is some nudity, there's some mature themes, and so um, if that's, if you don't want any of that, then I always say take a pass on this book, because it's gonna have a little bit of that in there, at times more than a little. I love these crowd shots here. Um, it's just, these are really hard to do and he does it really well. Now we're getting into Salas, another guy, another kind of gangster guy. So turns out Luba is connected now, married to Peter, who's a two-timing guy, gangster, and he's got his world that he kind of somewhat shelters her from, but because of her now money and such, she will get mixed into stuff. And, uh, I don't want to spoil it so much about what's going on, but it's a great book. And um, I think maybe this is all we'll do. We don't need to go into everything. Oh, this is a great panel here. I just love this panel. It's a great one. So, yeah, if this is a really nice story, it's got a lot of characters. You really understand about this crime, crime situation and uh, Luba. And there's all kinds of insane, you know, heroin through the toes. I mean, it's got some, it's crazy. But it's really well done. Again, and I, the other book I read of his called Three Sisters was similarly uh, written. So I'm assuming all his work is like this. Just damn good. No other way to, to put it. And uh, I mean, look at this page. This is great. Just the, the acting here is just really well done. It just looks so good. Um, man, it's no joke, man. So there you go. This is, uh, we'll do it kind of short because I don't want to spoil it. I don't need to go through page by page. Just know that this is a, a, a wonderful book. And uh, I would definitely highly recommend checking out this series. Art is dang good it's it's the it's the art of comics i mean this is the kind of stuff that uh you kind of aspire to he's one of the best and he's still out there making books so there you go thanks a lot for uh watching my videos i really appreciate you guys you know give me some comments of what you guys think what do you what do you think what's your favorite kind of gilbert story or love and rocket story and uh feel free to to uh hit the like and subscribe button okay guys have a good one bye